We need you so much, Father. We just want to start off the base of everything. Just without you, we are nothing, God. Just, Lord, thank you that you are so awesome, so huge, God, that we can't even comprehend how big you are, Father. And that we can just see you better, Father, that for who you are. I pray that you will reveal and manifest yourself to us, God. We are here to, to worship you. We are here to lift up your name. We are here to find your presence, Father. Maybe some people will find the presence of God for the first time of their, of their life today. But I pray today, Father, that you will take us in to the holies of holies, that you will refire us, revive us, lift us up, God, in this morning hour. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We just open our hearts for your word now. As we just want to come into your presence, Father, and pray that there will be a flow of your spirit in the service. I pray, Father, for order in the service. I pray, Father, for godly, divine uh, impartation and order and revelation to flow freely this morning. And we thank you that anointing will break yokes and destroy burdens this morning. And that the heavens are open above this place. In Jesus' name we say thank you. Amen. Okay, so we're just going to start with a short message, not a very long message this morning. I want to just say a few things before we start with the worship, because this is what it's about, just to understand also, you know, what God wants to do and what God is busy with at the moment. It says, Hebrews 4 verse 16, Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, uh, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in a good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. He says that we must fearlessly and confidently and boldly ap approach the throne of grace. And this boldly, God has been pressing on my heart that we need more boldness and more, you know, uh, holy anger. We need to approach this enemy with another level of, you know, uh, fire because they, they, it's, we are we're not fighting, uh, you know, flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and powers. And so when you show up for the fight, you must really roll up your, sh uh, your sleeves. You really have to fire back at this thing because you have to know also from where you are fighting. You know, God is all consuming fire. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Get the picture. Get the picture of where you are hanging out. You are hanging out in the presence of all consuming fire. My father is so hot that he made the sun come out of his mouth. He spoke everything into existence. The sun came out of his mouth. And now he says that I'm created in his image and in his likeness. Now, when I speak, I'm supposed to see what kind of power God has given us as a believer in this earth. And when you see these pictures and Im imaginations, you will start to believe and you'll start to increase in your power because God wants you to, to, um, to meditate means to imagine. Imagine what God gave you. You have to imagine this like a four-year-old child, three-year-old child without the watch, doesn't know how late it is, just knows everything is going to be fine. And that is how the child-like faith works. But God showed us this morning a lot of double-mindedness still going on. A lot of people get seed, bad seed in their hearts. They get bad contaminated seed and, they, and their hearts get double-minded. So they speak one thing and they speak another thing. And so the one eye is looking that way and the one eye is looking that way and they're trying to walk forward. But they can't see where they're going. One foot is this side, one foot is that side. One foot in the light, one foot in the darkness. One foot in fear, one foot in faith. You can't have faith and fear. You've got to decide which side you are on. And so, if I was you, I would remove myself from people that, that are in doubt, unbelief, fear. Right? You're going to shine your light, right? You're going to say what you have to say, but some people want to fear. Some people want to doubt all the time. 
And I'm saying that you've got to guard your heart. God says, guard your heart above everything that you guard. Guard your heart. Don't allow bad seed in your heart. And sometimes you just have, you work in a place or you live in a place where these, where these things also hang around. Those spirits of unbelief, doubt. And so you have to cut off soul ties all the time. And you have to bind the demons all the time in that situation. So that, because you are there for a reason. Mark 2 verse 22. It says, and now one puts new wine. No one puts, sorry, no one puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins. And the wine is lost and the bottles destroyed. But new wine is to be put in new wine skins. And this is a renewal of my heart, my mind. So continuously, if God wants to pour out new wine in me, right? On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were drunk. They, they called them drunk. But they were drunk with the new wine, right? The new wine that God poured out, right? God wants to pour new wine. But you've got to like get yourself, you know, in with a new heart you have to renew your mind your thoughts your your how you believe so that god can put new things in so this is a constant prayer actually for the rest of your life renew me father renew my heart create in me a new something new so that i can receive new i don't want to be stuck in old i want to always be you know in today not in yesterday so I want to move with the Holy Spirit and where He wants me to go. That must be your prayer today. I want new wine, God. Come and renew me so I can receive new wine. It says here, Psalms 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart and, and renew a right spirit within me. That's my prayer. Create in me a clean heart. Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. You've got to change your attitude. Attitude will determine your altitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and accepted acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you do do not be conformed but be transformed right I'm gonna see myself being transformed by God that the old will pass away but the new will come and the way I see myself changes all the time the way I see what God says about me look at listen to this he rules and he reigns this is my God but because he rules and because he reigns, I rule and I reign because I do it in his name. <laughs> See, he, I rule and I reign because he rules and he reigns and I do it in his name. He has given me authority to rule and to reign. But if I can't see this and if I can't receive this, maybe you have an old mindset of tradition that you say, no, look, it's not for Christians. It's not for, for normal church people. It's for the pastor. He must do this. It's not... The way that God, it's not the way the Bible speaks. It's for every believer. For every believer, right? Luke, Luke 19 verse, Luke, Luke 19 verse 37. As we approach the city, um, as, as he was approaching the city, uh, at the, the, the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to rejoice. You see, the whole crowd of disciples started to rejoice, began to rejoice and to praise God. Okay, so they did it loudly. They did it for, with, a, with all mighty miracles and, and works and powers that they witnessed. They did it out of the thankfulness and what they've seen. The whole crowd started worshipping and praising. And crying, blessed, celebrated with praise is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, freedom there for all the, from all the distresses that are ex, um, experienced as the result of sin, as a result of sin, and glory, majesty, and splendor in the highest heaven. And listen to this. And some of the Pharisees from the thong 
said to Jesus, Teacher, reprove your disciples. Make them quiet. They're making noise. Why are they putting up a show like this? Why are they shouting like this? Why are they crying out your name? Why are they doing this? It's not, you know, it's not cool. They, they, they're doing something awkward. They, they're awkward. And he replied, verse 40, he says, I tell you that in these, if these keep silent, the very stones will cry out. So it's a Pharisee spirit and a spirit of tradition that will tell people to stay quiet. This morning, as we're going to praise and worship, don't stay quiet. Don't stand still. These people cried out to God. They worshiped God audibly. They made a, a big thing out of it. And I believe that the difference between people is actually the way that you worship God. The way that you praise God. I'm not saying that it's a show. It's not a show. It's how you actually perceive God and how important and how huge He is for you. That is the difference between people. If you lift Him up, He's going to you know, lift you up. That's how He works. So don't this morning, if you're going to feel that you don't, you're not going to say the name of Jesus or shout out the name of Jesus, you are influenced by Pharisee spirit, right? So they said to Jesus, Reprove your disciples. Let them stay quiet. This morning, I'm not going to stay quiet. You see, God showed me that the fire in me is supposed to be so hot that whatever wants to enter my body will die because of the fire. It will burn because of who's in me. The heat that is in me, the fire that is in me is much greater than the infirmity that's in the world. They can come, but they can, they're going to burn because of the fire. So you can actually stir up the fire of God in your heart and in your life and in your body. And so we have to be full of the fire of God. And I believe that's why you are here today. For a touch from heaven and a, revive, a revival, but also a refire. Refire me, God. Light the fire again, God, in my heart. You will see that when you're on fire, you, everything changes. Right, so we're going to go in the tabernacle again. We're going to go through the door, Jesus Christ. First you have to believe. First you have to understand that it's because of Him that you can go in. You go in not by your works, by what you are and what you've achieved. You go in by the blood of the Lamb. Right? And then you go in the outer court. That is where the washing takes place. The, that's where the, the, the washing takes place, is the cleansing of the sin. That's the way the offers are made, right? So we're going to thank God for the offering of Jesus Christ. So our, our offer this morning is also our time that we put it one side. Some people feel that, you know, that they, that they, that they could have stayed at home, but they, they came here by faith because of the offering that they made for God. And so God is going to receive these offerings in the outer court. And that's why we're going to go and do communion only when we start going in to the presence of God. That is how it works. So then if we go past that first section, the outer court, we go into the holy place. That is where we find the lamb stand. That is where we find the, the, the bread stand, the word of God, the lamb stand, the Holy Spirit. So the, the bread and the fire mixed the word and the Holy Spirit mix gives us revelation. And that is, that is God's concrete mixer, right? The holy place. And then we put some worship, incense, altar, right? Together with the Word, together with the Holy Spirit. And we put it in a mixer, right? <laughs> and then God starts to give you revelation. You never be the same again, right? And then you go from there uh, into the holies of holies, right? With, and, and then spend time with the all-consuming fire, God Himself, and be filled with His fire. So I'm telling you now that, you know, to live in this world as it is at the moment, um, whatever, you know, people can say, look here, yeah, they, they have aeroplanes and they, they're spraying stuff over the people. I've heard this. I can believe anything because I'm very critical about what's going on at the moment. But... I tell you, whatever they bring, whatever they form, whatever they do, will not prosper. Have no success over me. And I'm going to stay so hot in this time that nothing can come into me. Right? I want to be like Paul that picked up a poisonous snake and it 
doesn't even harm him at all. Why not? Because, you know, because of the presence, because of the, you know, I think about what Jesus said, you can't drive these demons out this kind because you are not enough in prayer and you don't fast. The flesh is too strong. The, the, the sinful nature must be pushed down. We must take away its food sometimes and tell it who's the boss, right? I spirit, have a soul, and I live in a body. I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. I'm going to tell my soul too what to do. I'm going to tell it, look here, we're going to church. Excuse me very much. Shut up. I know what's good for you. Your soul will talk you out of anything within five seconds. You get an idea, it will say no, but there's, you know, another Sunday next week. And then, you know, it's cold outside, you are tired, you never rest. And then you have to just get up and walk by faith and run. So this is the tabernacle that we're going to go through into the presence of God. And then Acts 8 verse 16, for he had not yet fallen upon any of them, the Holy Spirit, for they have only been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 17, Then the apostles laid hands on them, one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. You see, the, you receive the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands. That's what you're going to see this morning. That is how the Holy Spirit also gets transferred. Sometimes. You can sit there in your house and the Holy Spirit can come on you. But this is also a part of how the Spirit of God works. And then you're going to see some other things. People might fall over, look like they're dead. And then you must know <laughs> what the Bible says about this. When the soldiers and Judas came to arrest Jesus, and Jesus answered them, I am He, ascending from His divinity, they collapsed on the ground. Imagine this. Who is this? Is <laughs> and where's Jesus? <laughs> and he said, I am he. And then <laughs> they collapsed. Ah, oh, sorry that I come over a bit strong for you. Now get up, take me to the cross. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine how the picture looks. Thank you, God. But yeah, I think I have to go now. <laughs> Thank you for the fire. When, when John saw a vision of God, this is Revelation 1 verse 13, uh, 17. Well, sorry, that previous one was John 18 verse 6. This one here, Revelation 1 verse 17. When John, John saw a vision of God in heaven, he fell as though he was dead. Somebody once said to me that I, you know, when we pray for people, we pray them dead. They fall and they die. But they never die. They come back to life. Saul went, uh, went, went, went on his way to Damascus to pursue the Christians, fell to the ground when he heard the voice of God. Acts 9 verse 3 to 4. Right? Ephesians 5 verse 18. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is the pouchery, but even... Uh, but ever be filled with the, and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. You see, that's, that's getting under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Believe me, what you need is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because there's other spirits out there that wants to influence you. So if you get filled with the Spirit, you'll be under the influence of the Spirit. And I want to be under the influence of the Spirit of God because He knows everything. Right? So it's like stupid not to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because he's got all the wisdom, God wisdom, not world wisdom, that he can deliver to me. He can say to me things that I don't know yet. He can tell me about things that will happen tomorrow. He will guide me. He will lead me. And that's what I need. That's what you need. Right? So Acts 1 verse 8, it says, but, they, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and, and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He says that you will receive power. That is dunamos. That is dynamite power. 
you can receive power from God and you'll be a better witness for Jesus Christ, but you can also handle a lot more with that power. You'll have superpower called patience, <laughs> kindness under trial, you know, under pressure, kindness, peace that surpasses all understanding. Things that you can normally not do, you'll be able to do with this power. And that's why you are here this morning, to receive this power of God. That is what we are open for. I want to go so high, right, into the presence of God that I can't even think about these things that are happening down here. These things that are happening down here will be small, will be minute. They will not affect me. They will not get into my mind, not into my, and affect me. They will not affect me because I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Nothing can separate me from His love, right? I'm in, in a level that, this, that these things cannot fly that high, that are flying down here, right? That is what you want to see this morning, the picture you want to see. So, uh, yeah, you got the communion with you now. I'm going to ask uh, Brendan just to remove that podium, please. Okay, you guys can stop the streaming.